Hi, uh, I've had a few people ask me um, uh, for a basic tips and tricks video on uh, recording sequences on the analog keys or the analog four. Um, forgive me if it's uh, it's too simple for for some people, obviously. But the fact is, is you know, the working methods for some people is, are quite tricky because it's a it's a different way of working compared to a lot of other synths, you know, uh, especially in Moog and things like Moog or, or things like that. Um, Forgive me, I'm English, so we say Moog. But um, yeah, it, essentially it's just a basic tips and tricks, and uh, hopefully you, somebody gets something out of it. Right, firstly, I'm going to try and record it via the step mode, um, and recording trigs and trigger recording. Now, essentially, when you're recording trigs, you hit the record button like this. Oops, I've actually got tracks already on there, so I'm going to delete these tracks. There we go, right. And I've reset the kits and everything else, so the kit is actually reset. So let me just do this. Clear kit. There we go. And as you can hear, in the lovely sawtooth wave there. Um, now, essentially, this is actually on play, um, but what I do is highlight that, and that actually sets the trig. So if I was to press there, for instance, that's me recording the trig. The same with all, all of these. So red light on, you can record trigs. Red light on and press play, that's live, re live recording. So again, I'm just going to go back to tricks. Now, as you can hear, I've got four beats there, um, and it was just playing the uh, sawtooth wave. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the pool. Now, go into the sound, sound selection, uh, and I'm going to go and view the pool. So view the pool. Now, if you've never done this before, what you tend to do is, is you, you say sound, and it says effect sound manager and you highlight sort of like you know go through there and it allows you to highlight certain things so for instance you could do a filter to actually do a search so you want to search for kick drum say for instance um, then it allows you to actually highlight multiples so you can highlight 10 kick drums and then when you press right and you go fully to the right it says save to pull or copy to pull and each project, for instance, has its own pool of 128 sounds, I think it is. It's either 128 or 256. Um, but that is local sounds that are ready for everything on this particular project. So, for instance, if you have a song that is taken up multiple different tracks within that, that, that project, um, you know, you can have your shared set of sounds actually held in the pool. Very easy to sort of get them and get access to them. At the moment, I've actually got a kit... Uh, kick L as my kick drum. So for instance, I'm going to be loading that in on the track. So if I press play, perfect. And I've got one bar. So literally it's just doing um, 16 beats. Uh, so one bar. So that's it. That's that's trig recording. Essentially you press, press one and it, it records it. So that extra one that I've just placed in there, this method actually allows you to do is it allows you to completely control the actual synth. Now you can actually change the instrument per trig. Um, there's a, a guy actually who works for um, the actual company for Electron and um, he's called Mr. Dataline and I'd suggest you check out his videos. He's the best on the machine that I've seen and um, absolutely brilliant at um, modifying sounds and actually utilizing it to the best. Now on the last video I did I showed you how to actually apply LFOs and such and you know and, and work with um, a serial mode which in actual fact is rather than using new oscillators it was actually to pass the sound from the previous oscillator. Um, but you, the same thing again you can just use oscillators instead of a serial mode. But to control different things you use the LFOs. But that's the usual, that's the that's standard synth. But on these particular machines, because of the trig parameters, the trig recording parameters, it allows you to change and modify absolutely everything on the fly. So that beat there, uh, well, uh, simple, I've just, I've just added another bass drum in there. But if I hold my finger down on it, I can control everything. I can control the amp of that. I can tr control the reverb, for instance. And so for instance, on that beat now, But what I want to do, what I want to do is I want to load a different instrument in there. So hold the trig and choose. And this happens, this is why the bank actually becomes the pool of sounds actually becomes very important. 
I can actually go through my pool of sounds and I've got lots of different drums in there um, specifically for this, this reason. So I like, I'm going to use this one, so for instance I've got HH. There we go, so on that one I've actually got a hi-hat now. And you notice it's still kept the reverb and delay. So that's all recorded, that's still recorded for that particular trick. So as standard it should be. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press that trick and say copy. I'm going to paste it on all of the off notes. So all on the third notes. First beat, first bass drum on the first note um, and then those on the third note. Um, maybe even put one on the fifth down there or something. Or even mess about with micro tunings. We'll try that afterwards. Um, so now let's hear. Yeah, nice. And now I'm going to get this final one here and I'm going to do some micro tuning. So for instance, I'm going to butch, butch, butch this out. Rather than it being a full step apart, I'm going to actually do it half a step apart by literally pushing the tune in, the micro timing across. So essentially it's going to be half a beat behind this one now. more like a ghost note you can actually affect that kind of ghost notes within this so you can literally ga gain a note I could move a note from here to within one millisecond of this one so it sounds as if it's on there but I can actually place the two notes together also I want to change these hats because they're a little bit boring so I'm going to add some reverb on that one second one I'm going to add some delay but a little bit of reverb as well um, this one a bit of reverb again this one bit delay and this one I'm going to add the reverb and delay and do a bit more right now let's hear I'm going to now add some filters and mess about with the filters a little bit so only a touch just to sort of give them some change the attack on this one or change the actual decay slightly less but the one before it slightly more and that's it that's trig recording mode so that's essentially just putting um, you know just laying in the triggers and modifying them now I'm gonna the next one obviously is a, a different mode and we've got we can actually record to beats. Now I've got a beat on there so I don't really need a track or a click track but I can actually create a click track because you press function and track down here and you've got a click track and you can lay that in. There we go. And that but as I, as I said I don't really need it because I've already programmed in a bit. So I'm going to lay in a little bass for instance on this one I've got to get out of the drive, I've got to get out of the pool, I've got to go back to the drive. I'm going to grab one of my own bases. Let's just hear how it goes with the track. Okay. Now I think that this is going to need like a four bar piece. So you click on function and press page and it takes you into the actual the bars, um, you know, how many patterns you've actually got within this section. Now while you're on normal mode, you're actually affecting the patterns for the entire piece. But if I you can use these cursors to go backwards and forwards. Now if you go to this one where it says advanced, all the way to the left, and you push down, now you're on the advanced mode. And this means that you can actually change how many bars are on each 
track. So for instance, track one should be 16 bars. So if I click on it, 16 bars. Track two, I want to change that to, um, it's not 16 bars, 16 beats. I want to change this one to 64 beats, so that's equivalent to four bars. So now, you can see the lights are lit up here, one to four, so I've got four bars. This one, back on track one, it's just one bar. So essentially you can control it like that. You've even got control over the actual the length of the bars themselves as well. So for instance, you can actually have, rather than it being 16 beats for that particular bar, you can actually change it down to be 12 beats. But it's still, still playing out within a 16 bar piece, so it just kind of loops at the end. So it's not a truly, I think the Octorack actually has you know, really stretchable timings. Um, and I think the, uh, the, the Rhythm um, has the actual stretchable timings, but not this one. This is actually still connect, uh, kept in the 16 bar, uh, 16 beat per bar. Anyway, so let's get on and do some of this bass. Um, I'm going to give it a playthrough and then do a live recording. Forgive the bad timing. Oops, I don't know what I've done. I've actually changed the normal, the actual time I've got still set to length of 16. So actually, even though that track was going to be, um, was actually going to be 64 beats, or four bars, the actual, the master time was actually set to 16. So essentially the clock never ticks forward. So again, this is actually within your own, you know, experience you've actually changed this about, modify it, change it and see how you can get on with it and play with it. But it's there, it's just the functionality. So right, let's put it on and second time lucky. Sounds okay. Now, again, when I switched that beat before on um, the hat, I, the last hat in the range, I actually skipped it along and changed the micro timings. What often happens, actually, especially when you're recording, you could have a beat that this is actually how you can modify and fix individual notes. Now, if a note falls slightly, even one millisecond before the actual start of the bar on the micro timing, when you press play, it doesn't play the note. When it's smack on the time or after the time, it plays it. You see, so that's something to be aware of, especially on pads. If you're even one millisecond before the start of the bar and you press play, um, the pad won't come in. It will be the second time round that the bars, bars start again. Also, um, when you're recording, if you actually press record and play twice, press play twice, it actually puts on the auto quantize. I tend not to like it, so I always turn it off. Um, I'm a bit free on time. I've got a natural sort of swing, I believe, and um, it kind of gets messed up by the quantize. All right, that's okay. Now, again, press the red button on, and I can actually change and modify these things. So, for instance, first note in the bar. I'm going to have that um, play a bit reverb, but only on the first bite. There we go. So now I've just added a little bit of reverb to that. It doesn't sound particularly good. But it's just to show you that it can actually be done. Um, again, with this, I can control everything. So I can control the speed of an LFO by a trig. I can control the envelope filters by a trig. I can change the filters. I can even change the oscillators or a sub bass, a sub oscillator. So for instance, in oscillator one, I want to put a sub oscillator on. That's actually now recorded to that one trick. So I turn that back off. 
Um, so you're in full control of everything. Every single thing can be recorded in that with, with that trig mode, and you can add to something else. Because so, once you've recorded, even a live record, you can see the trigs that you've recorded by pressing just the, the record button once. Um, now, essentially, let's go and do a pad now. Um, now, I want to set this up to be obviously four bars, but I'm limited to four bars. So, for instance, I want this to go beyond that. Now, chain mode is a really good one. And chain mode it essentially allows you to put chain together these patterns. So, for instance, if I hold down the pattern selector up here, you've got bank and group. So, for instance, the bank is bank A, B, C and D, and then you've got E, F, G and H, but they're different groups. So essentially at the moment I'm on bank 1, uh, section 1, so that's A, bank 2, bank 1, section 2 is B obviously, and so, so, so on and so forth. So for instance, if I press down that, I'm now on, I'm on, on number 9. Now, let's do this again. If I press that and hold that trick, I'm now actually choosing the pattern that I'm on. I say copy, so I'm actually copying the whole pattern. Let go of it. I'm back in normal trig mode, so you don't do anything with it. You press it again. Press the pattern afterwards. Press and hold paste. It takes about two seconds. I've now copied that pattern. So number nine is now copied to number ten. And you know, you, you'd be thinking, well, why would you want that necessarily? Well, when you choose it, press both the nine and the ten, and it actually sets chain mode. And chain mode allows you, I actually had a, a song, for instance, where I was recording eight bars of four loops. So that was a, you know, really long piece, but I was playing live strings over it and, um, you know, just trying to come up with a particular vibe. And it allowed me sort of like eight bars in chain mode with me just playing that. The song sounded exactly the same and to all intents and purposes to the listener it was exactly the same. But for me, it allowed me that scope to actually add what I wanted to it. So now I've got two bars or two patterns of four bars each chained together, pattern A9 and A10. And it shows you on the screen here, and it, t it tells you what pattern is going, and then it tells you what pattern's coming in next, and then it goes on a permanent loop. So as I say, you can do multiples of that. Song mode is exactly the same, but you can actually specify pattern nine, for instance, six times, pattern 10, five times, you know, that kind of thing. And, and you've got a song, and you can build up an entire song and skip between. But in uh, chain mode, really handy for laying in different sections. So let's try and find a pad or something. I've got a pad that I modified from the standard sound kit. I'm sure you recognise it, but I've done something different to it. Don't know. I don't recall exactly what. Right, so now this one, I'm going to allow it to go through the actual timings, to, through the actual the two bars, and then I'm going to start recording because. I've not got no accounting on, on this or anything, so here we go. trig on yeah the first trig on the second bar I didn't actually hold down I must have re-triggered the actual note somehow um, so let's do that so that's actually set now now again if there's something I don't like on these I can actually modify them and change them so on bar 9 for instance I paid a flat note on the second bar so, for instance, this one here says that I played that note when in actual fact I should have played that note. 
So that's all I've done. I've changed it. So that's permanently changed that note. So press chain mode again and then play the whole piece again. Obviously they're identical so I didn't actually particularly need to do those over two different fields but um, let's try and get something that's now one I can't find anything everything was jumbled about uh, the machine gives me new lessons every single day so it's great there we go so uh, a nice clean lead so for instance this one is going to become more apparent when you're actually playing it because of course I can actually make this, let's change that, so that's four bars again and I'm on four bars within my four, uh, within my two chain mode and that's it, so I'm going to get eight bars in total, so let's record. So um, a little bit of timing off one of the last notes actually on the final bar, on bar nine, let's turn off that. Also, I found that my pad was actually slightly wrong timing on the start bar. There we go. It was actually prior to the actual record head going, so it never registered. Um, so if I'm actually the same on track 10, it might well, well, might well turn out that it's actually fast on that one. But no, I had actually recorded two separate bars. So again, that's it. So you've got everything from there. So you actually record into a live record over two over chain mode, and chain mode again is you choose two things and you actually highlight them and then it places it in chain mode two or more things um, allows you so much more also switch uh, swing mode within the actual song itself for instance is gives the actual drums and such a more natural feeling rather than being absolutely perfect on the bar so if you press function and pattern and you actually assign a swing mode for instance it comes as standard at 50% but I usually set it around about 55 to 60% and that's it. It's on 65 so it's obviously the last project I did. So now let's hear it. done there was while recording live recording because this was flash flashing I was actually changing the effects actually so going through reverb and delay and chorus and actually just modifying those by hand this is actually represented on the screen by see the half lit triggs you've got the lot right triggs here and then you've got the half lit ones these are actual these are not notes these are actually 
patterns that you've actually saved in from the actual effects down there. So I can delete those and it won't really affect the actual sound or anything. I'm not deleting notes. The dark ones are the notes, but they'll also contain trig recording information as well. Um, most of the time you don't really want to be doing that. You actually want to affect it either from an LFO or some kind of parameter where you can click on a trig and change the individual rather than doing it like this. But the fact is, is it happens and some people prefer doing it this way as well. So I think that's everything. Um, you've got the, the trig mode recording. You've actually got the live record pattern mode. You've got the click track, how to set that. Um, also, get yourself into making pools, the sound pools, actually building tracks together so you can actually make multiple drum kit sounds and things. You can even do a multi-map mode where you can actually change that that kit, that actual sound pool, and map it across the keys and actually play multiple different keys across it. So for instance, have an entire drum kit actually on the keys, which is okay. Um, it is very good, but you've actually got to be able to play that live because there is no changing the um, the trigs around and such and things like that. You can change the trigs and move the mo movement a bit, but the fact is, is the actual key notes themselves are tied into the actual multi-map. So you essentially play it live. Um, but I used to do that and I used to play I like playing it that way. Now I prefer just laying down the trigs. But um, again, I think that's everything. Uh, yep. That's all I can think of at the moment, so I've gone completely blank. But hopefully that's enough for you, um, and hopefully you can sort of get on and, and learn a bit more about the actual brilliant machine. It's phenomenal. And also check out Mr. Dataline. Uh, he is actually the official person for Electron, um, and he just shows you everything. It's quite amazing. Okay, thank you.